Kabir lives in his heart, in his works, in his very being. Padamshri Parish Maithi is one of India's leading artists, once known for his mastery over one unforgiving watercolors. Today he experiments in virtually every medium, from photography to sculptures to filmmaking to, of course, painting. Welcome, Asa, on behalf of Chandigarh Lalit Kala Academy. It's both an honor and privilege to have you here. Thank you very much, Nonika Ji. It's my great pleasure and honor to be here in Chandigarh uh, at uh, Chandigarh Lalit Kala Academy. And it's been a long time they were planning to do this, this event, but somehow the correct time was not coming. So the time is here today, and I'm very delighted uh, to share my journey into the world of art. Uh, you belong to West Bengal. That's uh, right. A, a state which all of us consider as a hub of art. How did that influence your initial journey? My initial journey uh, started at the age of seven. As a child, looking at the potters and the artisans making the idols with clay, and giving them a shape, which is a great tradition in Bengal during pujas. I'm sure everybody knows how Bengal is dominated with uh, Durga Puja, Kali Puja, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and many things. So, lush green fields, water bodies, you know, water laden sky, beautiful landscape, riverscape, seascape. Uh, was the beginning, they were the beginning, you know, inspiration for my... So you started uh, with uh, making images of gods and goddesses, molded them in clay, is that correct? That's right. First it was a uh, clay toys, small toys, and I used to create those toys and I used to sell them in the village fairs and festivals. And that was my support to my art because nobody wanted uh, those days that anybody can go and do art. Do art because kahavatha khanawana kuch nahi milega, bhuka marega. And is it also true that you initially you don't have money to get admission into College of Art? Uh, not only the College of Art, I did not have anything uh, to support my art because my father was a small clerk in the government office with the six siblings. Uh, it was very struggling uh, with the life, forget about to support art or anything. So I don't know how this last so many years that God is so kind and helped that I have come here today. No, today your works sell like hotcakes and are also bought by who's who of the country, so including film stars as well. Uh, so, uh, my question is whether the profile of the buyer matters to an artist? It is the lover, how they love the art from their heart, that matters. And that is very important because art is something, it is very close to heart. So if you really, if anybody really loves the art and acquires and collects the art, that gives the biggest joy and pleasure because that's stays forever till the last day of their life and my life. So their celebrity status doesn't matter so much as their love for art. That's the, the biggest awards and uh, happiness and joy. And your works are today at Indira Gandhi International Airport. Also some of your works have been acquired in Bombay. Uh, so how does it feel to have your art in the public domain constantly in the, under the eye of people. See, art is public. It should be public. That way the awareness with each and everybody will go to a greater heights. Not the very few people that they should appreciate art. Art is not really that. If you go back to the early civilization, the cave painting or the sculptures on the, you know, like Ajanta, Elora, they were all public art. The people could interact day to day, every moment of their life. So it should not be in the drawing room or a bedroom. It should be public. 
and it's very good and wonderful thing that today that India is coming in a big way to create a lot of public art and that way the awareness of art will grow in a greater heights. But when you travel, you yourself come uh, back from a flight, to have you come across people admiring your work of art and saying things which uh, may have stayed with you? Uh, very often they want to take a photo with me if they recognize, if they know. So that happens. Also not only here, even in many places, many uh, public places, um, all over the world they have and they are always they want to take uh, because that's a great joy for them. Uh, you've always been known as a master of you know water. The way you tame have tamed water, no one, very few artists have. Uh, so what made you move towards other mediums? See, my initial uh, stage, I told you, clay modeling and sculpture. Then when I started painting, uh, it was very quite easy to tear a piece of paper from my you know, notebook from the class, class notebook, and little bit the tube color and a brass. Within a short span of time that I could uh, paint a painting where not very expensive materials were involved, neither uh, too much effort, but it needed a tremendous skill and perfection to achieve that. Because in watercolor, there is no rectification. You cannot uh, rectify the watercolor. The sizes, size is a big matter because paper size is very, very limited. Once you do, it is done. So either you succeed or you are failure. So you have to be 100% sure to start a watercolor. Then I realized slowly, slowly when I was uh, going in from primary school to higher secondary school, secondary school, realized that watercolor is the most challenging and most difficult medium in the field of art. And I am very adventurous that way, that where there is a challenge, there is, uh, you know, the problem. I really want to see that and to tackle it, overcome that. So that drove me to come up to this stage. And in the beginning, I always wanted to do the bigger watercolor. Probably the the size, I'm very obsessed with the size, most probably. So I was, you know, joining the paper, two, three paper together because you, I could not get a bigger size paper. It was not available, not that I could, that nowhere in the world, you know. So I was joining. Then anyway, you know, it's a big problem, big journey to, you know, get that paper. So that way, uh, it became very close to my heart, that watercolor. And within a short span of time, you can create a masterpiece. And the biggest challenging thing in watercolor, until and unless you are master in medium, then you can't even create a piece of art. Basically, you are handling the water on paper. And that depends with the temperature, with the paper, with the atmosphere, with the quality of water, which kind of water, either it has a lot of car or is very soft water or hard water, that affects the color big way. I, maybe you are giving 100% red or blue, but with the reaction it will become like 20%, then artist can get fed up. But what made you switch to other mediums? What was the trigger for that? I love to flow like a flowing river. I want to change, not that I want to change, very spontaneous so it changes. And I love to travel, so that way I'm every day interacting with a new culture, new color, new people, new places. And it is changing automatically, spontaneously. Later on when I went to art college, I had to practice oil, acrylic, sculpture, printmaking, designing, everything. Then you become specialized. You want to go to, you know, sculpture. You want to go into painting or what kind of Western style of painting or Indian style of painting, what kind of painting you want to go. So, uh, slowly, slowly, you know, it was 
like in a raj, I was moving into canvases. Canvas you can get any size, there is no limitation, it is easy to handle, you can rectify. But already, you know, the understanding of watercolor was purely there. So it was quite easier for me to handle the oil, acrylic and other mediums. So not only oil, acrylic and other, I do mixed media like I do watercolor, pasting different kind of paper, creating texture and surfaces, new dimension, putting colors, watercolors, using conti, charcoal, you know, many things. But uh, river and boats have been recurring uh, motifs in your work. Uh, is that true today as well? Uh, well, my journey started from Bengal, as I said. So I was, my life was surrounded by boat, water body, water laden sky, as I told you. So art is always socio-economic and political. So all the social, my environment, the nature, that was me and that was my art. That's why water, color, water body, boat, Came naturally. Naturally, it was a natural phenomena. As Aristotle said that all art is not but imitation of nature. We can't think beyond nature anything, either in drama or in writing or in, you know, dressing or in painting, any form of art or anything or science, we can't think beyond. But nature, of course, has been your constant companion. Uh, but where do you find it in polluted Delhi, which is where you live right now? Uh, well, I live maximum six months in Delhi, last 30 years. Six months I travel, I go out and I paint. Uh, my materials travels with me everywhere, even in the plane, train, wherever I travel. I sit in the plane, I do sketches in the train. I have no problem. I sit anywhere and I just take out my everything and I started painting. The pollution is just few days, uh, which is very unfortunate, uh, it happened. But that also has a beauty to paint and capture. You travel a lot. Uh, how does that inform your work? See, uh, that influence, my travel influence a lot in my art. As I said, the new color, new culture, new places. Hey, I went to China, I went to Japan, Mexico. So all this comes into my art. I have done series of all these places. When I went to first, 1993 to Venice to discover the root of Turner and his watercolor. So I realized that this is the place, not only Turner, many important artists uh, of you know, the golden age, they captured Venice because that place is so beautiful, so inspiring for any creative person. Light changes every minute. The water, the shadows, the romance. And that I discovered and I painted. And la I think 27 times I have been to Venice and I've been painting there, doing photography, uh, many things. It's called the Venetian Odyssey or something? That's right. right. The first exhibition was unveiled in 2000. Um, in Delhi, it's called Venetian Odyssey. There were many paintings which I did in Venice, brought them and you know it was exhibited. Um, so my travel really big way influenced um, and influencing constantly in my art. But when you paint nature, you paint landscapes, uh, what informs your work more? Is it memory? Is it experience? Or is it your ability to paint, your craft? Eat everything. It's, it's like it's good cooking. It's not just only a dal. Spices, the water, the chef, everything combined creates the good dal. Uh, you spoke of Turner and how you wanted to go there and how he has influenced you. But you've also spoken about uh, being influenced by Picasso. That's right. And so what is it about him that has impacted your sensibility? His geniusness and tremendous uh, energy and to transform anything into art. He could transform even us into art. Chair, table, glass, our clothes, he would transform into art. 
and he painted till the last day of his life and he said no day without line i try to follow that i even in the plane i must do something but you're doing exactly the same you're transforming uh, motorcycle parts tires trunks all these kind of things into art i believe as i said that he was a genius and uh, if you are an artist why you are bounding yourself into one thing explore explore new things new medium transform everything into art because art is life life is art but you are so prolific and your works are so monumental so do you do nothing else except art i don't understand anything except art art is my life my dream my breath everything but many of your artworks are of course larger than life and some may also see it as an attention seeking you know uh, gimmick well, what is scale to you personally why is see, that so important see it is easier to handle a small piece of thing but when you are handling let's say 20 feet canvas you don't know where you are starting where you are ending where the you are making the composition it's a big challenge as i said in the beginning the challenge and to compose that whole space is is a is a very big problem you can be lost that's the game if you can achieve in that that is that gives me a lot of pleasure now i'm doing a you know small 20 by 20 canvas or paper that's is good fantastic but not that the size matters you see our miniature painting they are small like molecule but they are very powerful you can see each and every expression of the people in uh, miniature art in fact for somebody who's obsessed with size what explains your fascination for ant uh, that is again a motif in your works that if you study carefully uh, it's 2000 around 5 6 uh, after my those himalayan you know summer spending time i start i got a place and studio 2003 in bangalore because the style of work got changed and uh, as you know the weather is very nice 2005 still the weather was fantastic as everybody says air condition city it was a rainy day the rain uh, in between the painting the sculpture beginning but the sculpture was not there it was very recessive the dominant was painting i saw one bullet motorbike was standing near the window of this bangalore house a rain was falling and i saw suddenly many ants were going and they said that ants they are more sensitive creature and they were going in a very you know disciplined way when i saw the ant the body i imagine looking at this bullet motorbike petrol tank i said my goodness this ant body looks like that bullet motorbike the fuel tank i said that's crazy imagination then i thought if i join two i could see that it could be the full body of the ant which again relates with my journey movement kinetic energy and headlight of that motorbike is like head of the ant and then all those things become the leg so i call my friend in delhi that uh, do you know where can i get he said yes in mayapuri you can get the biggest junkyard in the world i came back went with two of my friends and mayapuri and they we landed up with this shop and this my friend they expressed in a good local language because the shopkeeper was a sardar young boy bright young boy he asked that uh, he said we want motorbike so he said kinna chahiye he said maybe 100 so he was big shock he said what is he going to do with the 100 motorbikes he said oh art banayega he could not understand what kind of art will come out with this motor bike so i collected dismantled created this gigantic installation consist of 50 giant ants and those lights are all uh, 
you know functional light first exhibited in Singapore at Marina Bay Sands for that World Art Fair called Art Stage and I, it was my exhibition was in front of IYY, the world famous Chinese artist. I did not know who was IYY and that ant became very famous. It was all crawling ants on these uh, wooden logs and after that whenever I go to these international fairs, they say ant artist. <laughs> so my the uh, sculpture again reborn and then started clay, playing with big clay, big casting. So my again that now the sculpture installation became very, very dominant factor. So parallel, I do sculpture, painting, completely installation, everything together. Uh, but for someone who is a master of his medium, uh, what is the joy and pleasure of working with found objects like these motorcycle parts? Uh, as I said that even assembling and dismantling with all this you can create a piece of art and which is very new and unconventional. But today more, many artists are being drawn to installation. Yes. What is the pull? What is that magnetic pull of this form of? If you see the installation concept was there in India from the beginning. If you go and see the motor garage, they are all big installation. Chai tea stall is a big installation. Kumar ka jidhar banata hai, obi big installation hai. So installation is everywhere in India. Our India is full, loaded of installation. All, every installation is here. I think once you've also said that uh, folk art, Indian folk art is more contemporary than uh, even contemporary art. It, it is. is. Uh, Our art, folk and tra traditional art, if you, like Madhubani, let's say, we have many, Worli to Madhubani to Santalpur to many, many places. Every place you go, you will see in a corner, nook and corner, you will see folk art. And they are so close to heart, so contemporary, so simple and taken from the everyday life. You can communicate with those art easily. If you blow them up, if you properly exhibit, they can be better than any contemporary art today in the world. Your own exhibition, Yatra, was also a tribute to Jatra, uh, the West Bengal folk theatre tradition. That's right. That's right, because as a child, I used to enjoy like how the somebody will dress up like a Hunuman or somebody will dress up like a, you know, a Raksas. So all this, this was, it, it was completely a fantasy. And that Yatra, and the stage was in the middle of everybody, all unique you know, like dresses and everything. And that was not only me influenced with many artists in India. So uh, that Yatra was also a big way influenced because I grew up with all those. As I said, the life and art evolves with socio-economic and political. And you've, al you've also created uh, works uh, out of Tagore's poems. So how difficult is it to translate words into visuals? See, if you know, see carefully, like the same thing, the expression is in different thing, different ways. A poet or a writer express with the word, but same thing an artist express with the color, line and forms. The dancers, they express everything with their dance, motives, movement, mudras and with that. So the language is different, but the mother is art. It is like the milk to curd, to paneer, to cheese, to butter, but it is milk. Uh, your work is colorful, vibrant, often it's called the happy world of uh, Parish Maiti. Uh, do you take that as a compliment? Uh, India is colorful. That's our identity. That's me. Without color, think the world is all gray. If you go to Rajasthan, if you go come to Punjab, you see the full curries. It's a riot of colors. You go any place in India, you go to Gujarat, you go to the Himachal, you see the color. Because that's life. And my essence is India. And I try to, you know, transform them into my art. And that identity is very important. Sitting in India, eating here, 
getting the breath of this place, I should not create African art. <laughs> Absolutely, but it's also a very positive world. Uh, and because I love to observe and see and uh, uh, enjoy the positive world. Because we are every day with so much negative things. Why to again project the negative things? Because uh, as in aesthetics, it's clearly said that art should give you joy and happiness. So, are you saying that negativity should have no place in art? There are, but as I said, even in negative things, you can show joy and happiness. You can show. That can be very difficult, proper way. Let's say the war scene, but sometimes if you see some war painting, you go in front of it, and stand there, that painting, you say, wow, what a beautiful work. That means from that war painting, you are also getting the joy and happiness. You said, wow. It's important to create that awe and one. It is called Vayanak Rasha. Vibhatsya. Vibhatsya Rasha. It is, but it's very difficult. Uh, more recently, you have also turned towards filmmaking. What brought about that milestone in your life? It's multidimensional and uh, it's very difficult. It's very painstaking because it's all very natural. And uh, probably the Bengal film, as you know, the Satyajit Ray, he was originally an artist cartoonist from Kalabhavan Shantiniket and he became film la filmmaker later. So art, as I said, is a different form. It evolves within you. So I made four films till now. Probably this is the beginning of my making the full-time feature film with my own experience. So you ha have you zeroed down on a subject or something? Subjects are very familiar and friendly where I have been going, what I have been saying, or I don't want to do anything what is happening in the moon. So will it be an extension of Parish Mahati, the artist or Parish Mahati, the filmmaker will be very different? I don't know hmm. how people will accept it. They know. Um, among many of your you know, admirers also is Sharmila Tagore, who has also written a book on you. How did that come about? See, um, as I said, great film you know, personality, huge contribution in the film, fantastic background in art, and uh, this journey, the world on a canvas, that book, the whole book is written by her, and we had many, we know each other a long time, and the photograph, uh, photographs of that book. I am at work in 16 destinations in the world done by very, very famous celebrated photographer called Nimai Ghos. Today he is 87. He was the photographer of Satyajit Ray. And that first camera of Nimai Ghos was presented by Sharmiladi. And from my early age, I got to know Pandit Ravi Shankar. If you See this book carefully. It is the confluence of the four people. Pandit Ravi Shankar ji wrote the foreword, Me at Work, captured by Nimai Ghosh, and the whole book is written by Sharmila Tagore. But so many books have been written about you, and much of uh, your journey we already know. But here, uh, would you like to share anything that you have not shared till now? Anything about yourself? Your I yet to discover my, myself what I am going into and uh, what is there inside and you know it is very spontaneous what maybe I was thinking yesterday I was not yesterday I am thinking that today maybe in five years I will be doing something else like as exactly as you have asked me about my watercolor I was doing this big watercolor this big watercolor today I do nine feet watercolor you never know that I will do Maybe bigger watercolor. So the renaissance of Parish Mehti is still awaited? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. So maybe I don't know what. Because our world is a very unconventional world. We don't know where or which world we are moving into. So we are here at the invitation of Chandigarh Lalit Kala Academy. Any thoughts on this academy? If you... it's, uh, I can see it is the most um, encouraging and dynamic Lalit Kala Academy in India. I have been seeing how this Lalit Kala is encouraging the new emerging and young talents, taking them 
many places in the world to give them proper exposure and lot of activities like inviting India's major artist to give them you know like opportunity to share their life their life and work and share with these people here and I was surprised this year like uh, when we were talking about uh, this program uh, chairman of Lalit Kala today Bhim Malhotra ji he said Paris ji I am at the airport with uh, some students uh, going to Paris, Venice and Florence. I said, what is that? So he explained me from the airport before boarding the plane. I was so inspired and so happy that uh, to know this. And I told many people, I said, what amazing thing that exposure is the biggest toil for any anybody in life. And he was doing it. But all these places have inspired you as well. Uh, inspired what, not only me, the, each and every artist of the world. But what would be your advice to the coming generation of artists? How to get inspired and you know not imitate? As you know, the great hard work is the greatest wealth. There is no shortcut in life. I may work during the day to capture the light, but my imagination world is moving every part of my life 24 hours in my dream in my like last night i was in a program in mumbai till 12. i was not sleeping because i was imagining a new thing to create your landscapes to begin with were all about nature and slowly figures crept in how did that transformation came about as i said very spontaneous 89 i came to delhi with an invitation from a very well-known gallery those days to have an exhibition. The gallery was having Satyajit Ray's exhibition and I came. Next year I had the 1990 winter I had exhibition. Exhibition was very successful. That ended up with another encounter and the gallery owner, husband and wife said that why don't you do your master's post graduation in Delhi College of Art. Why don't you stay here and study here. So they took me, I got admission in Delhi College of Art. Husband of that gallery owner was from Rajasthan. He said, you must travel to Rajasthan. And as you know, that to Bengalis, the Rajasthan is a very enchanting land because of Satyajit Ray's greatest film, Sonar Killa. We all love Rajasthan. So when I traveled 1990, first time to Rajasthan, I saw in the landscape, there is no color, very, very different. There is no color, no green. The green is very different, very gray is green. But suddenly I saw this red, blue, yellow, people with the attire coming. I said, my goodness, what colors they are giving to the nature. So I started doing those figures in my landscape. So the, in the landscape, the people were appearing. Then my next trip, to Jaisalmer, when I was listening to their folk musics, sarangis and all, I could see their feature, very strong, sharp nose, bearded, turban, very beautiful feature. I started drawing their portraits. So slowly, slowly, I started doing their portrait. And I was seeing the, you know, the marriage celebration with the camel, horses, the village fairs like Pushkar, Melas and all this. So my art became the landscape became very colorful and very figurative. And then later on, the figure dominated into my art. And they were my main inspiration. And today, even if you see many of my big, large paintings, very colorful, people with a strong feature, which Picasso's Cubism dominated big way. So that is the journey. Uh, into my world of art became the total figurative. Uh, you also talk of abstraction and you have very refreshing uh, you know, point of view on that. Uh, will you share that as well? See, like when I paint these large canvases, figurative canvases, uh, I first throw, I don't draw, throw the colors on the canvas. So the canvas, the beginning, if you see, they, they will look like abstract art like bimurt, say murt, like mm -hmm. there is nothing, it emerges things. So the whole world is like this. 
this confluence of this, you know, there is nothing but there is everything, abstraction. Like you see apple, but sometimes you see apple juice, it is the essence of the reality. So the abstraction is very much there and in between, even in watercolor I have done late 90s, early, sorry, late 80s and early 90s, a lot of abstract watercolor. You also talk of Pran Pratishta, you know, that how an artist infuses life into art. That is the big game within the photography and painting. Like when you see the photograph of, or the, when you see the painting of Mona Lisa, what is special? There is the, that persons is there. You, you try to take out, it's not just a portrait, it is the essence of that man and you feel the life is there. So that Pranpatishta you need and that began from my early age creating the idols. Slowly, slowly the Pranpatishta they do worship, puja, then the Visarjan. And uh, on a personal note, your wife is also an artist um, and uh, so when two artists live under the same roof, is it inspiring or is it, uh, you know, stifling or what kind of equation is it? In a good way, it's very inspiring. Of course, not that I, I am within another artist. In the family, we are seven of us are artists. You might not know. At this moment, you are seven. Who else? Jayashree's uncle, very famous, Shakti Varman. This is yes, own chacha. Yes. Auntie is Maite Del Tile. This is Chachi, aunt. It's an artist. Their daughter is an artist. My nephew is an artist. Just finished MFA, BFA from Kalabhavan Shanti Niketan. There are more on the way. Uh, so, artists uh, who so do. It is very fortunate that um, because, like, well, like North Pole and South Pole. If you see, the style is so different. But you believe that uh, you know, a family does, uh, does art together, stays together? It is. You see Ravi Shankar's family, dancer, musician, you know what? Uday Shankar was the biggest, greatest dancer. Absolutely. He was the biggest musician he could get. So it is, it is no matter, no problem. Art, you say, is like madness with you. Art is... A madness. So on that note, uh, we'll uh, close this interview. We're discovering Parish Mehti's art world in one interview is almost next to impossible. Hope it has uh, provided you a glimpse of his work and the man himself, who's as interesting as his works. Thank you on behalf of, uh, thank you, Mr. Mehti. On thank behalf you of very much, Nanika ji. It was a pleasure talking to you and be here at Chandigarh Lalit Kala Academy. It's a really a great day today and tomorrow I'm looking forward for this. The pleasure is all ours. Mm -hmm.